हेलो वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एनएसआईड दैट इज द नॉन स्टेरॉइडल एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी ड्रग विद अ स्पेशल रेफरेंस टू एस्पिरिन okay so in our mind first question is sir what is nsaid so all drugs group in the classes have analgesic or antipyretic or anti inflammatory actions in different measures so in contrast to morphine they do not depress cns uh, cns is a central nervous system so do not produce physical dependence and have no abuse liability and are weaker analgesics so except for inflammatory pain so majorly they are also called uh, non narcotics non opioid or aspirin like analgesics they act primarily on peripheral pain mechanisms but also in the central nervous system to raise pain threshold and they are more commonly employed and many are over the counter drugs so wherever we go to the community store or hospital pharmacy store we will get easily we will buy easily that uh, nsaid drugs so willowbark that is uh, salix alba had been used for many centuries that was salicylic acid and it was prepared by hydrolysis of the bitter glycosides obtained from this plant so sodium salicylate was used for fever and pain in 1875 it's a great success lead to the introduction of acetyl salicylic acid and aspirin in 1899 so phenacetin and antipyrin were also produced at the that time that particular time and the major advance was the development of the phenylbutazone Uh, in 1949, having anti-inflammatory activity almost comparable to corticosteroids, and the term non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs was coined to that uh, designate such drugs. We all know indomethacin. So indomethacin was introduced in 1963. These are a host of compounds that heralded by the propionic acid derivative that was ibuprofen, and have been added uh, added since then the cyclooxygenase that we also called as cox inhibitor so cox inhibition is recognized to be their most important mechanism of action so recently some selective cox2 inhibitors like a selecoxib uh, uh, have been added in that particular uh, groups so non opioid analgesics having uh, two types first one is a uh, analgesic also called as antipyretics and another one is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs so now we are going to see analgesics like antipyretics also known as a a drugs against fever and pain there is also one non steroidal anti phlogistics uh, nsaids against inflammation fever and pain and another one is as like a nsaid overlap particularly so antipyretics is also there that is used for gout therapy what is the mechanism of action so all of these non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs uh, have similar mechanism of action like inhibition of eicosanoids synthesis with a higher or lower selectivity and strength nsaids differ in the strength of cox1 and cox2 inhibition and both are the incidence of typical ae means uh, ulcer disease or you know which will be used in a bleeding so cyclooxygenase we'll go to the slide we'll see uh, see that cox1 that also known as constitutive that is a prostonates involved in physiological processes like a gastroprotective effects and platelet activities cox2 that was inducible activity enhanced by pro inflammatory factors that is 1l1 1l2 tnf alpha and oncogens so prostonates inflammation fever and pain cox they are central mechanism of analgesics and antipyretic effect localization that will heart and uh, often in a heart and central nervous system so these are the major important part about uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs we are going to see the classification and uh, also mechanism of action of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs see so there are classification uh, in a four classes non selective cox inhibitor 
preferential COX-2 inhibitor in which nemosilide, diclofenac, acyclofenac, meloxicam, etolac, these drugs are classified. Selective in the sense, third class COX-2 inhibitors, selecoxib, ketoricoxib, and paragoxib. And in the fourth class, analgesic antipyretic with a poor anti inflammatory action. Non selective COX inhibitor having category like salicylates, propionic acid derivatives, phenamate, enolic acid derivatives, acetic acid derivatives, pyrazolone derivatives. And the examples are like for salicylates, example is aspirin. And uh, it was uh, counter drugs, over the counter drugs, propionic acid derivative like uh, ibuprofen, naproxen, ketoprofen, fluoribuprofen. Phenamates mein aata hai, mephenic acid, uh, enolic acid derivative, peroxicam and tenoxicam, acetic acid derivative, ketrolac, endomethacin and nabutamaton, uh, nabumeton and pyrazone derivative mein aata hai, phenylbutazone and oxyphenabutazone. In the fourth class, that was the major class, analgesic antibiotic with the poor anti reaction. These, these are the examples of it, paracetamol, also known as acetaminophen. Uh, in, uh, I just wanted to mention one uh, term. Uh, the full form of paracetamol is N acetyl paraminophenol. That I have read in particular reference books. So I'll also give you the reference. So, paracetamol acetaminophen, metamizole, that is uh, propifenazone and uh, nephopam. So, there is a one note constitutive means constant production. Okay. And these are the key points like uh, for solution, the name indicate NSAIDs are those agents which are used to get relief from pain, inflammation and fever. And are uh, and as per the COX pathway, we understand that COX-1 and COX-2 ultimately from prostaglandin, which initiates perception of pain and inflammation. So anyhow, we have to block or inhibit, uh, anyhow, if we block or inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins, we are we may reduce the pain and inflammation. So that what exactly... Uh, Happen when we administered paracetamol, mm -hmm. metamizole, propimenazone, and nephopam. Mm -hmm. So, although COX-1 is constitutive in nature, thus it always get secreted without induction of injury and called as housekeeper. So, it's a better to inhibit COX-2 rather than COX-1. These are the another part of mechanism of prostaglandin. Mm -hmm. So, we are going for a special reference with the aspirin. First of all, I wanted to show that uh, drugs highly bound to plasma protein. That uh, table uh, we have referred from uh, KD Tripathi. So, these are the name of drugs, barbiturates, benzodiazepines, NSAIDs. Valproic acid, phenytoin, penicillins, sulfonamides, tetracyclines, tolbutamide, and warfarin. And uh, so salicylates mean aspirin, also prototype. Aspirin is a salicylic acid. It is rapidly converted in the body to salicylic acid, which is responsible for most of the actions. Other actions are the result of acetylation of the certain macromolecules, including COX. It is one of the oldest analgesic anti-inflammatory drugs and is still widely used. So this is the structure of Aspirin, pharmacological actions of aspirin, it is act as analgesic, antipyretic, anti-inflammatory action. Aspirin is a weaker analgesic than morphine. So always remember aspirin, uh, why we used aspirin in a wide amount? Because it's having a weaker analgesic uh, activity as compared to morphine type drugs. Aspirin, uh, ka jo dose hota hai wo hai 600 mg, codeine ka jo hota hai wo 60 mg. So however, it effectively relieves inflammatory tissues, injury related, connective tissues and, and uh, integumental pain, but is relatively ineffective in severe visceral and uh, ischemic pain. So the analgesic action is mainly due to uptending of the peripheral pain, acceptors and prevention of PG mediated sensitization of nerve endings. So a central subcortical action raising threshold to pain perception also contributes, but the morphine like action on psychic Processing or reaction component of the pain is missing. So no sedation, subjective effects, tolerance or physical dependence is produced from this particular aspirin. Another uh, aspirin resets the hypothalamic uh, thermostat and rapidly reduces fever by promoting heat loss. So that is 
what exactly happen while administering the dose of aspirin it immediately uh, also we uh, added the term rapidly reduces the fever by promoting heat loss uh, so that's why we get sweating cutaneous vasodilation but does not decrease heat production anti inflammatory action is exerted at a high doses like a 3 to 6 gram per day or 100 mg per kilogram per day signs of inflammation like pain uh, tenderness swelling vasodilation and uh, leukocyte infiltration are suppressed in addition to cox inhibition so quenching of free radicals may contribute to its proper intra uh, anti inflammatory action another pharmacological effect is uh, uh, metabolic effects these are the significant only at inflammatory doses so cellular metabolism is increased especially in skeletal muscles so due to uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation that will use to increase the heat production so there is an increased utilization of glucose and that will increase the blood sugar may decrease also especially in diabetics so if or and uh, liver glycogen is depleted so however hyperglycemia uh, is often seen at a toxic doses so this is reduced to central sympathetic stimulation gives release of uh, adrenaline and corticosteroids chronic use of large doses cause negative n2 balance by increased conversion of protein to carbohydrates so plasma free fatty acids and cholesterol levels are reduced by administering aspirin third pharmacological effect is respiration the effects are dose dependent uh, and that part we have already uh, um, seen uh, another is acid based electrolyte balance anti inflammatory another is cvs so central uh, so cardiovascular system aspirin has no direct effect in therapeutic doses larger doses increase this cardiac output to meet increased peripheral o2 demand and cause direct vasodilation so toxic doses depresses vasomotor center blood pressure may fall because of the increased cardiac work as well as the na plus and water retention so chronic uh, cardiac heart failure or uh, 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 maybe precipitated in the patients with lower cardiac reserve. It is also uh, particularly seen in the MI, myocardial infarction. So that is the death of oxygenated blood cells. Uh, another is GIT, aspirin and release salicylic acid in the death. So gastro, uh, gastro, uh, gastrointestinal tract like a gastric mucosa cause epigastric distress, nausea and vomiting. So it feels like a uh, uh, nausea and vomiting while administering the aspirin it also stimulate uh, CTZ junction so vomiting has the central component as well at higher doses so aspirin pk is uh, 3.5 remains unanalyzed and diffusible in the acid gastric juice so but no entering the mucosal cell and uh, uh, the ph of mucosal cell is 7.1 it ionizes and becoming indiffusible okay very indivisible. So this ion trapping and in the gastric mucosal cell enhances gastric toxicity. So for the aspirin particulate, uh, particle coming in a contact with the gastric uh, mucosa promotes local back diffusion of acid. So we are going to the conclusion that acute ulcers, erosive gastritis, congestion and microscopic hemorrhages. So the occult blood loss in a stools is increased by even a single tablet of aspirin averages 5 ml per day at inflammatory doses. So hemostremesis occurs occasionally, maybe an idiosyncratic reaction, soluble aspirin tablets containing calcium uh, carbonate plus citric acid and other buffer preparations are less liable to cause gastric ulceration. Another is uretic uh, excretion does related effect is seen. So aspirin is not suitable for use in chronic gout. Another is blood aspirin even in a small doses irreversibly. And uh, these are the drug interactions with NSAIDs, pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic both are there. You can see these are the references we used. You can also refer. Uh, KD Tripathi is uh, having a particular chapter in his sites. And these are the, some links and websites, uh, some citations uh, we have cited. Thank you to all.